Bible prophecy is amazing. In the prophecy of Ezekiel 38, the prophet describes events far ahead of his day. He was prophesying around the year 600 BC, at a time when his people of Israel were in captivity to the Babylonians. Through God's power, he tells of a time when Israel would eventually return again to their homeland. Remarkably, this prophecy has been being fulfilled since the declaration of Israel as an independent state in 1948, and since then the Jews have been returning to their ancient homeland in ever-increasing numbers. What is fascinating about the prophecy is the depiction of the events which will eventually bring about the Jews and the world in general's understanding of God. We read at the end of the prophecy these words of God, Thus will I magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations, and they shall know that I am the Lord, that I am Yahweh. Verse 23. What brings this about? The prophecy explains it's an invasion of God's people of Israel from a number of nations whose armies are roundly defeated by God's power. We read of their demise in verses 18 to 23. Who are these nations? Well, they are described by their ancient names in verses 1 through 9. And we're told they are led by a mysterious character called Gog. Gog is, we read, of the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach and Tubal, verse 2, Young's literal translation. So why would God cause this prophecy to be revealed, we wonder? It clearly would have had little relevance to the people of Ezekiel's day. It would, of course, encourage them to know that eventually their nation and the nations of the world would get to know the living God. But what relevance would these details be to them? We submit that these prophecies of old have been written for the discerning believer living in the times they actually depict. We read in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect Throughly furnished unto all good works. So this scripture then in Ezekiel is useful to believing people, particularly those living in the time period when the Jews have returned to their land. It must be understandable by them, else why would God have caused a prophecy of this nature to be written and preserved down through time? Believers with this faithful mindset then seek to understand the revelation from God in the prophecy relating to their day. And when we examine the names of the ancient nations, we realise that Gog is the leader of the Rus, or the Rosh in Hebrew. The ancient people of the Rus have become the modern nations of of Russia, Ukraine and the Belarus. Meshach and Tubal are ancient names for territories which exist in the Russian territory today. We are also told of allies who assist Gog in his invasion. These come from the areas of Central and Western Europe, North Africa, the Turkic nations and Iran. It's a huge alliance which will come down upon Israel. When we look up from our Bible and look at current events, what do we see? Well, we see a rising Russian power seeking to dominate the Ukraine and Europe. We see a fearful, energy-starved Europe struggling with the cost of living. And some commentators are already saying it might not take much for the likes of Germany to change its stance on Russian aggression. We see Iran and many African countries allied with Russia. We also see a growing hostility toward Israel. An aggressive and powerful Russia with an autocratic leader is exactly what we would expect to see as events unfold which will lead to the great invasion prophesied. In the news this week then, it is interesting to note that Russian President Vladimir Putin plans to grow his army. Al Jazeera ran an article on the 25th of August entitled Putin signs decree to increase size of Russian armed forces. Quote, 
President orders Russian military to increase its number of soldiers by 137,000 to a total of 1.15 million. End quote. The article stated, quote, The decree issued on Thursday will boost the overall number of Russian military personnel to 2 million 39,758, uh, 39, including 1 million 150, 628 servicemen. A previous order put the military's numbers at 1 million 9, uh, 1.9 million and 1 million, approximately, respectively, at the start of 2018. All Russian men aged 18 to 27 must serve one year in the military, but a large share avoids uh, the draft for health reasons or deferments granted to university students. The share of men who dodged the draft is particularly big in Moscow and other big cities. The Russian military rounds up draftees twice a year, starting on the 1st of April and October the 1st. Putin ordered the drafting of 134,500 conscripts during the la latest spring draft earlier this year and 127,500 last autumn. The BBC reported... This in their article entitled, quote, Putin orders 10% boost in Russian troop numbers, end quote. The New York Times reported, quote, Vladimir Putin ordered a sharp increase in the size of Russia's armed forces yesterday, signaling a lengthy commitment to the war in Ukraine. The Russian president raised the target number of active duty service members by about 137,000 to 1.15 million. As of January of next year, he also ordered the government to set aside money to pay for the growth. Some analysts described the move as a clear signal that after a full six months of fighting, Putin had no plans to relent. Much to the Western media's surprise, it also would seem that Russia believes its army is superior to others. The media's narrative is that the war in Ukraine has not gone to Russian plans. This is, of course, an assumption. If a longer and larger strategy is at play by the Russians to cripple Europe, then it might be going exactly to plan. Last week, Al Jazeera ran an article entitled, quote, Putin calls Russian arms significantly superior to rivals, end quote. It stated, quote, Russia is ready to sell advanced weapons to allies globally and co cooperate in developing military technology. President Vladimir Putin said, adding its latest arms are far superior to those of rival nations. With the Russian leaders' forces beaten back from Ukraine's two biggest cities and making slow headway at a heavy cost in the east, the five-month war in Ukraine has so far not proved to be a convincing showcase for Russia's mil uh, weapons industry. However, the Kremlin leader, addressing an arms show outside Moscow, insisted Russian armaments were years ahead of the competition. Russia cherishes its strong ties with Latin America, Asia and Africa and, quote, is ready to offer partners and allies the most modern types of weapons, from small arms to armoured vehicles and artillery, artillery, combat, aircraft and unmanned aerial vehicles, said Putin. Almost all of them have been used more than once in real combat operations, he added. He said Russia could offer new models and systems. We are talking about high-precision weapons and robotics, about combat systems based on f new physical principles. Many of them are years or maybe decades ahead of their foreign counterparts. And in terms of tactical and technical characteristics, they are significantly superior to them. End quote. So we can see then a powerful and confident Russia emerging on the world scene, resisting pressure from the West and forging its own way as a leader on the world stage. This is to be expected in the light of Bible prophecy. Not all the pieces are in place just yet, but we can expect Russia to be victorious in dominating the Ukraine and bringing the rest of Europe to its heel. Perhaps the rising energy crisis will assist in this. Perhaps an incident in Taiwan will weaken the dominance of the USA and pave the way for an even more dominant Russia. We will wait and watch to find out. The end result has been revealed in the scriptures. 
An alliance will take place of the Russian, European, North African and Far Eastern peoples. And an invasion will take place against Israel where God will act to save his people. As Christadelphians, we believe that the way that God will act in that great day will be through the return of his son, Jesus Christ. We read in prophecies such as Zechariah 12 and 14, Daniel 2 and 11 and Acts 1 of how Jesus will return and save the Jews from the invading army. As a descendant of the Jewish king, David, Luke 1, 32, he will re-establish the throne of the kingdom of Israel, also called the kingdom of God. See 1 Chronicles 28, 5 and Daniel 2. This will usher in a whole new world order based on God's righteousness under the rulership of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we watch and we wait as we see the day fast approaching when God's kingdom will come and his will will be done on the earth as it is done in heaven. That day when it is said of the Messiah that he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. Isaiah 2 verse 4. And we hope that alongside the Apostle Paul, we might be able to say, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. As those who do look for that appearing, we are so thankful to God for revealing the details of our day through his prophets, recording these details so that we can have confidence in his supremacy and the coming of his kingdom on the earth. Thank you for joining us for another Bible in the News. Tune in next week as we continue to watch the signs of the times in the light of Bible prophecy. <laughs>